Oh, let who, you want to start it off again, Dave? You might as well just start it off again. Go ahead with your number one. Okay, number one receiver, former adversary. We saw it twice a year. I just think he's got more advanced skills than any than any of the other receivers on this list. That back shoulder fade between him and Aaron Rodgers was killer. It, you can call it on any time. Devonte Adams, I, I think it consistently has been, you know, a top three receiver. I think he was a. I think he's the best receiver in the league, and I'll explain why on the other receivers coming up. But I, I got Devonte Adams. All right, all right. So my my number one my number one going into the season is Cooper Cup. It's obvious that he won the triple crown last year and i'm just knowing that i don't see him changing at all like he's gonna go right into this season and just be again him and i could see him and jj honestly just competing for the top spot you know as far as catches yards and touchdowns like those two are probably going to be battling Devonte adams i feel you man I, he is a beast i give him all his respect but with his quarterback situation now, new offense, I don't think he's going to be up there competing with Cup and Jefferson as far as like touchdowns and stuff. I think he's going to have to kind of mold. But yeah, I'm I'm Cooper Cup number one, baby. That's my number one right there. I got Cooper Cup number one. Yeah, I probably would downgrade Devontae Adams a little bit if it wasn't for he was going to a guy that throws the ball and you know, forces the ball just as much as Stafford does. So. Yeah, I figured he's gonna be the focus of the offense there, just like he was in. Yeah, for sure. Any, yeah, he's gonna do his thing. Teammates, right? Yeah, teammates, yeah, so. yeah he's gonna do his thing for sure. I don't, I don't doubt it. You know, I just, I mean, I'm just like, I'm optimistic to. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, just the unknown, I guess, is why I didn't drop him number one. But he says Percy Harvin. I, he's got to be playing to be in the top ten. Yeah, we're doing top this ten. Is all, going, this is yeah, an we're doing top Vikings. ten. Yeah, this we're doing a, top ten NFL. into the season. Yeah, going into this new season. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, Eli. Yeah, top top super, ten wide receivers super well. in the NFL in twenty twenty two. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, so my number two is Justin Jefferson. Okay. You notice who I already have him over. I have Justin Jefferson number two in the league. I only reason I don't have him number one is because that back shoulder fade yeah. of Dante Devontae Adams. And I feel like he's got more advanced skills, kind of like um, not that he's Randy Moss, but Randy Moss was noted for not bringing his hands up until the ball's right there, right. Uh, deceiving, the, uh, deceiving the defensive back, uh, the back shoulder fade, um, making last-second adjustments to catch the ball to throw off, the, again, the cornerback. He just has those advanced skills that um, I don't think we – um, force Justin Jefferson to do because we were such a conservative offense. And it's just that amazing that Justin Jefferson was able to get that many yards on a run first offense. And he just recently got quoted, we're no longer run run first. I think I sent you that meme. But uh, yeah, Justin Jefferson's number two and probably easily could be number one this year. But I just think uh, the advanced skills aren't aren't quite there. And that's because he's just five years younger than Devontae Adams. Yeah, or six years younger, five or six years younger. Well, yeah, all right, all right. So, and my number two, obviously, is the same, man. I got Justin Jefferson number two, and the reason is because, like I said, when I was stating talking about Cooper Cup, is I just think Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup are going to be the two at the top of the list that are going to be battling for that, you know, triple crown, just battling for the most receptions, most receiving yards, most receiving touchdown. I just think they're going to be going head to head. So, yeah, that's my that's my number two, man. I mean, you said enough about them. We all know that our boy in the purple is the truth, man. That's just not a secret. So, yeah, he number two on my list, man. So uh, on number three. Yeah, number three. Yep. I went with Cooper Cup, number three. I almost, I almost dropped him farther, and not, and not that, that I don't like him. I, I love the guy. I liked him back when he was only catching 900 yards. Yeah. But he, he doubled his season. Like he hasn't, he hasn't come close to this in any other season. So it's, it's one, it's a one season deal. I put mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson on him because he did it in two back to back seasons, 1600 yards and 1300. That's amazing for a receiver. Cooper Cup is, does not have two years like that. And he also has like 60 more targets 
than any of these receivers except for like on uh, uh, and maybe 30 more than like two of these guys but everybody else has got 50 to 60 more targets i think a justin jefferson or Devontae adams could do just as do better than him if they got the ball six you know six, thrown to him 60 more times mm-hmm. so uh, so i think they and if you see a lot of screen passes a lot of short yardage and catch and runs his average um yards per catch is like 13 which is his best all time in his career I, th- I think he's a product of a system uh, that helped him out a lot. He had the talent to be successful, combining that together, you know, Super Bowl. But uh, Cooper Cup, number three, I think the other two guys ahead of him are more talented. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I see you. Let me see. My number three. Let's see if it's getting sticky yet. Nah. My number I three know. is Devontae Adams. All right. So we, oh, we pretty much... Yeah, yeah, I mean, we we pretty much got the top receivers the same. We just got them in different order. Different order. That's all. So we know, yeah, Devontae Adams, man, got to show him his respect. I got him as number three. Like Dave was saying with the back shoulder. I mean, we'll, now we'll see if Derek Carr can throw that same pass, though. I mean, I don't think he can. I'm, I'm just going to be uh, honest. Like, now, he throws gonna... it deep. Don't get me wrong. But is he accurate enough? I don't think so. A, lo- a lot of Derek Carr's throws downfield or him throwing it, throwing a prayer up for the most part, or somebody's wide open and he's slinging it down there. But, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a different type of quarterback that really can put it in a spot where only Devontae can get it. And we, I don't know if Derek Carr can, can, can do that same type of stuff. But we're going to find out, though. You know what I mean? Might not see as many back shoulder catches from Devontae this year, but I'm sure we're going to see plenty of catches from him, though, because he's just that good. And Derek Carr is good enough to – you know, get him the ball, of course. So we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, I got him. I got to put him number three at least. You know, he he top three, top three on my book. Yeah, I would. You know, Stafford and Carr. I just always felt they were similar players. Yeah. So I I thought you know gunslinger would take chances. I would take chances throwing his Devontae Adams. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's fine I would too. Yeah, I would too. I'm sure he's gonna have a great season. Like yeah, that's. I mean, I don't doubt that not one bit. Like. That's why he's number three on my list. I mean, and and pretty much one, two, and three, they all can be swapped out. Like they're all interchangeable. Like at the end of yeah. the day, I mean, you know. In I mean? fact, like, my top four I think could be swapped out, but I went by I went I kind of kept with a consistent rule. Yeah. Number four, I got Jamar Chase. He only did it in one year. Wow. But he did it very well, and that's and the only reason I didn't put him over a uh, uh, Cooper Cup is because he's got more approved than me. Yeah. But he's he's far ahead of what Cooper Cup was at this time. But I think he and he broke the rookie record. He has he could he, he could possibly break the uh two year record at Justin Jefferson a little bit harder. He's six you know he's got to get sixteen hundred yards like Justin Jefferson did. Yeah. Hopefully Justin Jefferson can put the three year record out of out of reach. Um but uh Jamar Chase he just uh got such good concentration. I think he's got more concentration over Justin Jefferson because just balls that like went through receivers hands, um, be, you know, two receivers going by the ball. He's, he just, he was able to concentrate and catch it and then run with yeah. it. There's so many plays that were like cornerback, you know, missed it, missed a pick. He catches it, runs it in for a, an easy touchdown. He just, he has so much concentration with hands in his face, great route runner fast. Yeah. Um, just, adjusts to the ball and he runs and catches it just i, I love this player i uh, have so much confidence this guy has and and, and i mean and i mean not just not to start spicing this up too early man but he just got a better quarterback throwing him the ball man he got a better quarterback <laughs> throwing him the ball i mean you know that's a fact he might I, to be honest like joe burrow might not be considered better yet honestly but i mean it's looking like he's getting it oh yeah your guy's on dave so we talked, he said, um, knowledge, what's up, knowledge, man? I appreciate you tapping in, family, for show, though. You said um, you was watching the Browns podcast, and they had Irv Smith as a trade target. I mean, shit, hey, look here. I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm not, like, hype on Irv Smith. Y'all know my vibe on There's Irv. There's no way he's a trade target. Yeah. He, Absolutely no way he's a trade target, because who would we put at tight end? Yeah, we wouldn't have nobody. Like, nobody. he, all we got, to be real, so... You know, hey, it is what it is, but we got to keep him. And uh, what's the value going to be? What are we going to get a six rounder for him? Maybe. 
Yeah, because um, he hasn't showed he hasn't yeah, showed yeah. anything yet, really. I mean, he's, he's, not, he's, he's showed flashes. The season. Yeah, yeah, he he showed flashes that he can play, but I mean, we, he has to prove something this year, man. He he yeah, probably is, he's probably somebody on the team that has the most pressure, like one of the people that have the most pressure on their shoulders. Like, hey, as far as just his health and everything, you know, injuries happen, but I know it's in the back of his mind. Like, man, I cannot get hurt this season, bro. I got to play. But, man, um, we had like years with Sidney Rice being hurt until he had that big year, and then he got hurt after that again. We had yeah. Robert Smith as a running back, Kevin appendicitis or what you know chicken pox mm-hmm. all the shit he ends up you know breaking out for three years you know he could be a he could do that just just like any of those other receivers and running yeah. too bad that struggled the same way yeah for sure all right so we i'm it's my number four right <clears throat> yeah yeah so i for number four i got deandre hopkins i just think deandre hopkins is just a sure target I know he was hurt last year, but it don't matter because when he ain't hurt, like it, does, it, like he's going ball out. Like that's just a fact. Um, I know, I know the pass. I think it's been since he's been in the league, he's always led the league in like the least amount of drop balls. I think he even went through a whole season without dropping any passes. Like he never dropped a pass. So he's just one of those players. If the ball's in his vicinity, he's catching it, and he's good after the catch too. DeAndre Hopkins, man, had to put him at number four. He's he's gonna start. He's gonna start. You know what I mean. As as the list goes now, it's gonna. I bet you, me and Dave are kind of going on different wavelengths now because yep. I know for a fact <laughs> we're going different now for sure. But I yeah, agree man, with everything you just I said got, about I got Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins though. Like, and there's there's guys that I forgot about. Like for real. Like I'm trying to think. Like God dang. Like I know you're gonna say a name, and I'm gonna be like, damn. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, that's my that's my guy. Uh, yeah, who you got yeah. number five? I agree. Everything you said about DeAndre Hopkins. I just yeah, don't yeah. have him number five, and I'll tell you my reason when I get to him. Yeah. Um, but I agree with everything you just said. I want Debo Samuels. All right. Samuel, not Samuel. Like he yeah, Debo him. Samuel. Debo Samuel. He scares the crap out of me when he's on the field. Yeah. Uh he just when uh he just breaking tackles. Uh he's a he has the I think on the top ten list. He is the most yards per catch than any player on yeah. this list. Um, I think he's like 18, 18, uh, and a, 18 a catch. And that's just otherworldly this day and age with a controlled passing game. Um, it wasn't like back in the 80s where, you know, it wasn't uncommon that you get top receivers were like 18, 20 yards a catch because we threw the ball farther down the field with this, you know, when we're passing every down, it's tough to get over, you know, 12, 13 yards. But this guy's got 18. Plus, he has 350 yards rushing. Why not? Um, but, yeah, he's he's a big threat, and he's young. And he's 25. And he's my yeah. – you know, maybe – I maybe have him too high on my rule of, like, he only did it in one year. But it was an amazing year, and he was just dominant. He's a dominant player. I would be, I would be scared to face him every week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. Hey, he is a savage. I ain't gonna lie. I was man when he was when he was talking about wanting to be traded and all. I was like, man, we can give them, we can give them Dalvin <laughs> Cook, you know, and and a pick, man. Don't we'll go stop. to the Packers. I was like, hey, don't, don't go, go to the go Packers. To the Packers. Don't go to the Packers. Please, don't go to the I didn't want. Oh, Jeez. when I when I heard when I heard he was demanding trade, and everybody's throwing crap at me about oh, I think there's talk about him going to the Packers. Like, no. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good if he would have went to the Packers. I ain't gonna lie oh, to you. Jesus. We would have got terrorized oh, for the next ten years behind that. Um, let's see. So we on my number five. So my number five is Terry McLaurin from from Washington. Um. He just, I mean, he single handedly holds that team down, man. If you watching Washington play, he's the per, he's the reason why you watching Washington play. Him and of course they got Chase on the defense, but he is the reason on the offense, man. The offense runs through him like he's that dude. So yeah, I had to put him up there. I had to give him some respect at number five because I just think his whole skill set is just that good. Like his hands, speed, everything. Scary Terry. Yeah, there you go. I, I know that I was coming, Eli, man. That's what they call him, Scary Ted. That dude is just a savage. I would love to have him in purple, but, hey, we get to watch him play this year because we're going to drag him, but still, at least we get to go against him this year and, and see what he does. But, yeah, man, 
I had to put him on the list, man. That's my that's my number five for sure. Terry. You see McCormick. the comment here by Dwayne. I see starters at wide receiver: Thielen, Jefferson, Osborne, fourth receivers. Okay, now I understand what you're saying is that the fourth. And I had some collapse in my room here. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. Now, fourth receiver will be uh, rotational. I, I thought you said those three receivers would be rotational, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I agree with you. We get a lot of talent, deep talent, wide receivers, one of the deepest uh, deep, deep, uh, deepest um, wide receiver rooms in the, in the, in the league. So uh, we're in number six. I got Stefan Diggs, number six. He's uh, he's probably second or third most uh, most targets on this list, but for a good reason. Uh, I always used to say Thielen and Diggs, all they do is get open. They're always open. Uh, it's just amazing, amazing route runner, great hands. I think Thielen had a little better hands than uh, Diggs did, but mm -hmm. I think Diggs had a little more speed, um, a little more aggressiveness, a little more open field running than, let's say, Thielen did, but they're both equally – they were such identical clones of each other. Diggs is a little bit younger, and that's why. And and honestly, Thielen was the guy that wasn't injury prone. And Diggs was early in his career, but he's consistently been um, available. And I, I just just the top guy. I would, any any wide. He's a number one on any team. He's just an amazing player. Yeah, for sure, man. I gotta agree. I I didn't. I I mean. I was glad at the end of the whole thing, I was glad he was leaving because he was just acting like a prima donna. Because, I mean, if you think about the reason he was mad, he was right. Like, quit handing the ball off so much. Like, you have me and Thielen on the field, man. Throw us the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, you are, that's, I mean, and I can see a reason to being frustrated when you know you're elite as he is, you know. Just imagine Justin Jefferson being on the team right now, how he is, and but yet, Zimmer's the head coach, and we just keep handing off the ball, handing off the ball. He would feel the same way. I mean, at the end of the day, when you know you're good and you're not getting your opportunities, you're going to get frustrated. I don't care who you are, especially when this is how you feed your family. Well, one of the things I said about Diggs is that although, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think it was, it was about the offense, about Zimmer and his control over the offense and yeah. them not throwing the ball enough, and it wasn't mm – -hmm. He didn't wasn't had had to do with any of the the players or being a Minnesota Viking. Um, I think you know what sucks is that he didn't stay a Viking. But you know we wouldn't have Justin Jefferson, so I'm happy with it with, with the what way it turned out. Right. But you know he's ne there was always much to do. Like he he didn't like Cousins or whatever. When you saw him in all you know the Pro Bowl with uh, Cousins and Jefferson, they were fine. Even I've never heard him say a bad word about Cousins. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I I was one of the guys that said, why are you complaining? You, you, you've had your best years with cousins. You had two 1000 yard seasons. You had 900 the year before he, he showed up. Well, what's the, you know, what's the big deal? And then he showed us why, because when he went to Buffalo and had 1500 yards, he saw what he was capable of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When he, once he, once he had Josh Allen and it, he was on a, a pass first offense. And he was the only He's the number yeah, one he guy. Was, He's the number, he one was guy. The number one guy for sure. But yeah, they I mean they they damn sure turned up, man. But last year he dropped off bad. Yeah, though. well, not too bad. But yeah, he's he had just as many targets and 300 less yards. So yeah. Oh, I thought but he didn't have as many touchdowns either, though, didn't he? It was a it was a down year from the year before, but it was more like when he played with the Vikings. Okay. All right. All right, let's see. Oh, here. 100 yards. I forget how many TDs. Oh, okay. So he still had a decent. I just felt like he was quiet, like real quiet. Had, you know, they had a better year though. So. so my number six is Debo Samuel. Like everything you said, Debo Samuel, man, just an all-around good player. Could play running back, whatever. You know, like why not have a guy like that on your team? I wish we could have him on our team too. But you know, as fans, man, we want everybody that's good. But we have our guy, J.J. and Thielen. But Debo Samuel, man, got to give him his respect. I mean, when I watched the playoffs last year, it was like watching Debo Samuel just beat, you know, beat the Cowboys. And then he beat the Packers pretty much like he was the reason. Like there was a third down where they needed the yards and he made it happen, giving them the extra effort. I mean, this guy's just he liked that for real. So, yeah, I love Debo Samuel. I mean, Debo Samuel. I should have put him up higher. 
I was kind of like, damn, should I put him over Terry, man? But I'm telling you, Terry's yes. the type of receiver, though. Like, you got to go wild because he's a true receiver. Debo's hard because he's a he's not as good of a re receiver as he is just, a, you know, being able to run on swings. And jet. he's just he's more he's like a good running back, really, like a punt returner type style. Like, but when it comes to if you were to just line Debo up on the on the edges, the, the whole game and don't give him any handoffs or anything like that for the whole season. I really don't think he would be, he probably wouldn't even make the list. I'm going to just be honest with you, but how they knowledge. use him, they use him good though. So I agree with knowledge here. Luckily it worked out. JJ is the best receiver wide receiver in the league, despite the run first coach. Yeah. I have number two, but I did say I could easily see him as number one. He just doesn't have his advanced skills um, in, uh, just uh just adjusting the ball and, and yeah. catching over people like uh you know like Devontae Adams but yeah I'm, I'm with knowledge on that yeah um, I got him in number two as well so so really seven, number seven is my curveball I noticed you didn't say we were going to do a tight end list so there oh, is so a player put, that does so does put, and so I I brought in Travis Kelsey oh Travis Kelsey as a receiver a mm. ball catcher i just think he, he's another guy that you just can't you can't uh you can't not double team this dude he's gonna catch the ball he's gonna get 100 yards he's gonna get 10 catches he's gonna get a touchdown every game it just seems he's just you know obviously he doesn't do that he's a tight end but um but if you know he just he was the number one receiver, and they had a and they had Tyree Kill. He's the number one guy on the team, and they had Tyree Kill. Uh, he just he just gets open. He, he's a smart player. He run after the catch, hard to get down. <sighs> Catches in traffic, touchdown machine. I just yeah, Travis Kelsey, number seven, wide receiver. Yeah, even though he's a tight end, and I'm only doing it because we don't have a tight end list. Yeah, I know we don't have a tight end list. All right. My number seven, DK Metcalf. Um, DK Metcalf's just he's big. He's like that big wide receiver, big body. You can throw down the field, run the flies with him. You can run over the middle with him. I mean, you can you can have him run over through the middle with um with the slants and stuff like that. I mean, he deserves to be on the top ten list. DK Metcalf. I think last year he fell off a little bit, but I think the Seahawks just fell off. As a whole, I just think their locker room was just all disoriented with the coach and everything going on. There's just a lot of distractions going around DK, but he still did his thing, man. He's the best player on the Seahawks now, hands down. So this is pretty much going to be his team this year. Um, hopefully Drew Locke can throw him the ball this year, but I still think he's going to be OK. You know, I think I think when you got somebody like DK, Drew, he's going to save Drew Locke. He might actually get Drew Locke a another opportunity to be a backup at least on a team for the simple fact that he's on the team and if he stays healthy he'll make drew lock look better than he is on certain th on in certain games i'm sure so yeah dk metcalf man number seven number eight for me dk metcalf yeah um he had it down here 800 some yards whatever he had an amazing year the year before he came up broke just blew up on the scene he was he was uh what I felt about Demo, Debo Samuel, I just thought he was like scary and just dominant on the field. You know, last year, not so much, but he's still young. Uh, he came in this league with a 40 and a half inch vertical, a 4 3 1 40, and he's a huge individual and strong as hell. And he's still that player. He just, he just, oh, and one of the things is now he's like going to be the biggest option and the only offense for this team i just think yeah he's gonna he's he's gonna have a good year this year despite but uh, i think he's a huge trade candidate uh for these guys and he might go to a really good team uh, but individually a talented he is i did go by my year one he did it one really good year and the next one wasn't but and that's why i don't have him maybe higher on this list but yeah dk metcalf scary individual uh he mosses he can moss anybody um, he's a, of all the yeah. players on this team on this list. He's the Moss guy. He, he he'll Moss people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he will. Uh, I don't know, man. You gotta look at Terry McLaurin though. Terry McLaurin Moss. I, you know, I 
I I didn't look a whole lot. I don't know, maybe I missed yeah. something there. I'll go yeah. I'll go do some video. You got you got to go watch him before you before you start releasing videos on who who the best wide receivers are. Man, you can't be leaving people out like Scary Terry. Man, you I'm telling you. All right, let me see. Um, so we are number eight. Number my, my number eight is Stefan Diggs. Man, Stefan Diggs is down the list. Yes, he's down the list. Part of it is because. You know, the way he just left the Vikings, man, the way he went about it, <laughs> yeah, no, the way he went about it, you know what I mean? And then, I mean, Dave was saying that he didn't have that bad of a year last year, but I know the year before last, he was mm-hmm. really on another level. So then last year, it just seemed like it was quiet. I didn't hear too much. The media wasn't talking too much about him. You know, it just seemed like they had another guy that was um, ascending. Um, I forget his name. He's number 13, though, on their team. And they're saying that this guy is is a beast, you know. And it was because the game I watched, he had like three touchdowns and he was just doing his thing. So now they have two real solid wide receivers. But, yeah, man, I, I still had to put him on the list, though, man. This stuff on Diggs, Minnesota Miracle. You at least going to make my list, Diggs. You're just not going to be at the top like you should. Now, happen you have been in purple still, you would have been up there, man, at least number four, I would say, man. Shit, and he's least. another example why Zimmer just made bad decisions as a coach because this dude didn't dress for the first two games of his career. And uh yeah. and he broke out for 100 yards. And then he uh ends up after a couple a couple of games he gets hurt, and he's the reason Thielen was able to come out, break out for hundred yards, and that's what brought the Diggs and Thielen show, is because uh uh what what's it, well uh yeah, so uh, Charles Johnson, I think, got hurt too. So he ended up. So Thielen, Diggs, these are the guys. Uh, it's a Thielen. shame. It's a shame that injury yeah, has Johnson to Johnson got hurt. That's what made Diggs. Um, Diggs got hurt. That's what made Thielen. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a shame an injury has to happen for. And that, and he's one of the reasons why I think. Um, uh, what's his name from Michigan State? Uh, wide receiver, rookie, six round pick, Jalen um, Naylor. Jalen Naylor. Uh, he has a similar college history as uh, Diggs, although Diggs was like an all-conference kick returner his freshman year. He gets start gets in injuries, rough go in college. We drafted number five. That's why I feel about Jalen Naylor. Had injuries throughout his career. Senior year breaks his hand. Four last four games of the season. You know, still had great numbers for the games he played, and uh, you know that's why I say like a Jalen Naylor. We picked him in the sixth round. He's not. I don't think he's as good as Diggs, but you know he's a step step below, and that's why I think like uh, I forget who was saying um, uh, when Dwayne was saying that the bottom four guys, uh, the the fourth receiver is going to be a rotation. Jalen Naylor is going to be part of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hey, appreciate you, James, too, man. I'm just not seeing that comment. You say. <laughs> He said he on, he in the store with his family and he watching, man. Appreciate you for sure, man. You always tap there. Thanks. You always tap there. The word. Make sure yeah. you go over and uh, uh, subscribe to Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm uh, yeah, at 296, which is happens to be Adrian Peterson's record rushing yardage of 296. So I, I need you guys to come over and get me to 300. Yeah, man. Hand sure. me the ball one more time so I can get that four yards to 300 against San Diego. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, let's see. So we on nine, right? Uh, my number nine. My number yeah. nine is Mike Evans. You, you skipped me. Yeah, oh. go ahead. So Mike Evans, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, Mike you... Evans. Go ahead. I'll say nine, and then I'll go ten. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So funny. Mike Mike Evans is my number nine. I mean, shit, Mike. I I he. So now we added another play on the list that be mossing people because it was oh, DJ yeah. Metcalf. I think Mike Evans be mossing people too, man um mike evans was good even when he didn't have tom brady man he just was somebody who always found his way to be in the conversation as one of the best wide receivers in the league you know there's a player at on that is a, there's a player that's a wide receiver that should be on this list man and it's crazy i'm, I'm gonna wait to the end to see <laughs> just in case just in case dave don't have him on there but yeah man there's a player that i'm thinking about now and i'm just like yo it, it blows my mind that he might not be on mine. He's definitely not on my list, and he might not be on days. But, yeah, man, Mike Evans, man. Mike Evans is my number nine. You know, like I said, just great all-around player, tall guy, can moss people. My only thing is, man, he threw away Tom Brady's ball. But, hey, that kid was 
kid was lucky, man. Tom Brady paid him for the ball, gave him Bitcoin. I mean, damn. Gave him Bitcoin. Couldn't that be? Why couldn't that be me sitting right there? You know what I mean? Getting that ball. Uh, like, God. Well, damn. now it's Bitcoin's like worth half as much. It was um, funny, man. Yeah. Evans just threw. Evans just was like, "Here you go, man. So you, you can have the five hundredth pass. I, what was it? Was it like the five hundredth touchdown or something like that?" He was oh, like, here you go, it. man. You can have it. You can have it, fam, man. Here you go. It's no big deal. It's just That's, a football. Well, you know, and then and then he ended up – I forget. There was somebody that bought – was it Tom Brady's final touchdown pass? And then he came out of retirement or something yeah. like that. It's like, yeah. Well, I, I forget what what that was, but some similar some something like that happened. I'm like, yeah, guys, something like that did happen. All went like down. And Tom, Tom Brady gave him – Tom Brady gave him something, though, I think, too. Yeah. He found that but, guy. But uh, – so my number nine was Tyreek Hill, and and uh, he, although I said he was probably a number two choice on Kansas City, I just think he's a threat at all times. I don't think he gets a lot of touchdowns. You mentioned uh, Evans. I did not have him on my top ten. I I wanted to. He's probably eleven for me. He's he's an honorable mention. He could easily be in the top ten because of touchdowns, especially. But I just I just felt like he would disappear in games. That's the only reason yeah. I didn't put him on top ten. And then he would have like some two hundred yard three touchdown game. But where did he go the next week? And I think it had a lot to do with I think player I think teams schemed against him because he's not a burner. Right. Um, Evans wasn't a burner, but God would I love him in the red zone. Um, and I think he draws double coverage and and stuff like that. So I think he's a great guy to have on your team. Uh, just outside the top ten for me. Um, and I and, the, and I got to. I always drafted him in fantasy, and oh god, he pissed me off when he would have one of those down weeks. And ah, so maybe it's a little rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Yeah, but I put Tyree Kill um, because he was good when um, Mahomes would throw off script and scramble, and Tyree Kill would go to the open spot. Mahomes would find him. He was really good with that. He has a knack for that. Um, he's not a big, you know, he's not a big red zone threat. Um, I I would have had him maybe earlier, but because of that, he's not going to be a touchdown guy. And the fact that, you know, Kelsey was number one on, a, I think, as a, the number one option, and Tyreek Hill was a second option on his team. But he's going to the Dolphins. We'll see what happens. He might be the number one option on the Dolphins. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see, man. Shout out, shout out Kansas City, man. I was actually, that's where I was for the week. You know, I wasn't there for good reason, though. My wife's father passed away, man. He was a diehard Chiefs fan, though. And I told him while he was there, man, I told him, man, the Chiefs are going to be in the Super Bowl. I couldn't give him the win, though, man. It was hard for me to give him the win, even though the circumstance, I know he's laughing, laughing at me right now, man. Look, you're going to be playing the Vikings in the Super Bowl, but I don't know if you're going to win, all right? Because I think the Purple going to win, but we'll see, man. Hopefully the Chiefs make it, though, again, without Tyreek Hill, which I think they will. Who they pick? They picked up, like, what's the what's the kid's name? Is it Ross or something? I think there's, like, a guy that they're real hyped on was from Clemson or something. Justin Ross, I think. Um, they brought somebody in that's supposed to be, you know, supposed to be like, oh, plug and play type of deal where it's like that's why we're not too worried about Tyreek like we already have his replacement and I think Hardman's kind of like the same type of player anyway, oh, okay. yeah 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 all right so let's see all right so let me do my or, or you want me to do it? yeah I'll just do my number it don't matter and then you can do your number 10 all right. all right so my number 10 is Jamar Chase all right oh gosh okay. yeah I got Jamar <laughs> I only reason why I got Jamar at 10 which he could he could be he could be higher, you know what I mean? Like how you had him. You had him at what number four or number five? Yeah, I think he's that good. Yeah. yeah, he is that. I mean, I believe he is that good. I ain't gonna lie, but I mean, I know during the preseason he was like dropping a lot of passes, but that don't matter because he did. He like came back and just he like, may yo y'all. He may have been yeah. like the best wide receiver the second half of the season. Yeah, for sure he was, man. I mean, he was electric. I mean, he was unstoppable, like for real. And I think. Him and Joe Burrow, man, for the next 10 to 15 years are going to be, like, just terrorizing. It kind of scares me because Justin Jefferson might be, uh, you know, negotiating his way out, you know, starting next year. And, you know, yeah, whatever, but those, it would be a nice fit. 
Yeah, but they well, well, what it is is they wouldn't be able to afford both of them. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, with the with the pay, but yeah, hey, you because know. Jamar's gonna be he's gonna be a player that's gonna obviously get a big payday, and so is JJ. So they're not gonna be able to play with each other unless it's further in their careers where they're both kind of, you know, maybe, maybe Burrow marries a you know a top, you know, a top model who makes more than him, where he can take twenty million a year. Hey, he, and, he, and he might he, to be real like some players are like that like that's how tom brady was he might yeah he's like, like oh let's marry someone richer than me yeah i don't care about the money man <laughs> bring jj here matter of fact give him 20 million off of my off of my salary just so i can have just so us three can reunite man and run this thing back right. that would be crazy yeah but yeah man i had to put him number 10 man i had to at least put him on the list it was hard to keep him off of the list but now this one, this one was hard for me to drop him down this far, and it was DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, okay. He, dude only had 500 yards of receiving, like 530 or something like receiving yards last year. Yeah. Talent's still there. He's 29, I think 20 or 29, and he he's just got all the skills. He's uh, the closest thing to Devon, Devontae Adams, light. Yeah. Um, great hands, great body control, just great, great player. He, he kind of surprised a lot of people when he came to the league, I think, um, you know, but uh, he can do it again. You know, yeah. he's got a good quarterback who I ranked one spot behind Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into this again. All right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, De DeAndre Hopkins, number 10. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have Evans, uh, C.D. Lamb, probably outside looking in. But who is the one guy you – so you the one guy says. that's crazy, man, that would be on majority of people's list is Michael Thomas, man. Like, yeah. it's crazy. It's like, yo, this guy went from two years ago being the best wide receiver in the NFL. I mean, just that dominant to, I mean, we, me or you didn't have him on the list. And I was tempted to put him at number 10, um, but... I just feel like going into this year, it's going to be a lot different, man. I'm I'm telling you, Washington with, you know, Carson Wentz can sling the ball downfield and he hit Terry. Terry McLaurin is going to definitely have a successful season. He's already been having successful, successful seasons with um, Heineken.